equation of a line. If you want to, uh, it's, it's a different way of writing the equation of a line that you did probably learn about in grade 10 or 11 or sometime. If we have some axes, which we will make look like this. Okay, and then we had a line, let's say we have a line that is something like this. So let's say we have a line that is not like that. <laughs> let's try again. Like this. There's my line. Okay. What's the equation of that line? Y equals 2x, right? Has a slope of 2. Okay, remember the slope is 2 here. 2 over 1. If we took that line now and moved it somewhere else, and I asked you what the equation was, so let's say we moved it over to there. Okay, so instead of that, um, actually, what is that equation now? What could you call that thing instead? It's not y equals 2x anymore, what is it? What's the equation? It's y equals 2x minus 3, right? How can you tell that? Because the slope is still 2. Remember, this is the slope. That's the y-intercept. This is the y-intercept. Another way of coming up with the equation of that line, though, is... Uh, something called point-slope form, and you have to understand transformations, translations, to understand why this works. So let's pretend that we did it using what we just learned about translations. Let's put the line back here, and let's say we wanted to know what that line was, but let's just follow one point here. So let's pick that point right there. If I take this thing and do this, if I slide it the two that way, and one up like that, Using the concept we just learned about shifting functions, what equation could we write for this line now? Given that the point went from here, it went 2 to the right and 1 up. So this, this is going to be different again. Now, we already just figured out that the equation should be y equals 2x minus 3. We just found that out. So we're, we're aiming for it to be that. But let's say we did it using translations. We shifted it two to the right and one up. So how can I write the new equation if this was my starting function here? This is what I started with, but instead now I shifted it two to the right. What change do I make to, to make it go two to the right? What change happens in this equation after I've gone shifted it two to the right? This gets changed to something. It gets changed to x minus two, right? I'm going to put the two there. All I did is change that to that, right? Change x to x minus 2, shifts it 2 to the right. And then if I want to make it go 1 up, what do I change that to? y minus, right? It works exactly the same way as the x. If you want to go in the positive direction, you put y minus. That's also the, another way to write the equation of that. It's actually a lot simpler. That's called point-slope form. It's called point-slope form because all you need is a point and the slope, right? Here's a point. What are the coordinates of that point? 2, 1, right? 2, 1, well, the x coordinate's 2, and the y coordinate's 1, and then there's the slope, right? It's called point slope form. Like if I was to tell you, um, well, first of all, before we do some crazy one, these should be the same, right? I should be able to show that those are the same if I'm telling you they represent the same equation. This one you get, it's called slope-intercept form because there's the y-intercept and you have the slope. But you should be able to show those are equal, which is not too hard, actually, because all you need to do is take this, y minus 1 equals 2x minus 2, multiply that out. 2x minus 4 is y minus 1. And then we already know, if I put that 1 on the other side, what do we get? Just a y by itself, 2 x minus 4 plus 1 minus 3, right? So they are the same. It's called point-slope form because you can write an equation if you have a point and the slope. Here it was easy because we can just look at what the y-intercept is and you might be saying, why don't you just write it that way? That's just as easy, if not easier, to write it that way. But if I give you some crazy thing where you can't necessarily see the y-intercept right away, Point slope form is a lot easier. If you know you're, draw, you're you're doing something and you want 
you know, this goes through 937 and negative 124, and it has a slope of uh, 6 over 17. We can right away write the equation of the line without having to figure out the y-intercept or anything. If you know that it passes through this point, right, this point right here, all you have to do is say, well, if it was in the middle with this slope, like pretend it just passed through the origin. Let me draw this for you. If, I, if it passed through the origin with a slope of that, 6, 9, 17 is not very steep, like that. If I'm going to shift it 937 to the right and 124 down, what's my equation going to look like? Before I shift it, it's just going to be 6 17 x. If I shift it to this point, what changes am I going to have? I'm going to have y plus 124 to go 124 down. And I'm going to have, instead of x, I'm going to have x minus 937, no matter what function it is. Okay? Point slope form is something that you have learned about before, but maybe you haven't connected it with translations, shifts. That's all it is. Okay? If you wanted to, you could change that to slope intercept form, but it doesn't matter. So when you're doing things on your picture there, you can write it in this form if you want. Okay? You might want to move that 124 to the other side so you can enter it on the computer if you're doing that, right? Put that to the other side and make it minus 124 in the end. You don't have to multiply that out if you don't want. Right?